we are now discussing the pulmonary air volumes or lung capacities. Uh, which are used when we are talking about uh, pulmonary air volumes and for most of these terms there are abbreviations and these abbreviations are more commonly used as compared to the full term which is given to it. Let us discuss all of them one by one and then toward the end we would uh, understand the same volumes with the help of a graph which is uh, prepped or obtained using a spirometer. So that we will do at the end. But let us understand what exactly these things mean. First is tidal volume. Tidal volume is that volume of air which is normally inhaled or exhaled. So it is the normal volume of air during normal inhalation or exhalation. And this value or volume is 500 milliliters. These volumes are also important plus the term given is also important. As we said, these names are known more commonly with the abbreviations. It is known as tidal volume or TB. That means the normal amount of air that you inhale in a normal resting position. Normal volume of air, uh, let me just complete the definition of air inhaled during resting position. Now, resting position here does not mean lying down or sleeping position. This is if without doing any physical activity, if you're just sitting down, then that is the normal position or resting position. And the volume is 500 milliliters. That is approximately half a liter. So when we are inhaling, this is the air which is actually going into our lungs. Out of this 500 milliliters of air which goes in. Some air reaches up to the alveoli and some air remains into those tubes. Remember we talked about bronchial uh, intercom, primary, secondary, tertiary, bronchi and then the further branching up to the alveolar duct. So some air remains there. So out of this 500 there are two parts. 350 milliliters reaches up to the alveoli, reaches up to alveoli. That means about 150 milliliter remains in the tract, that is the tubes which are there. So actually out of 500 milliliters, how much is reaching up to the alveoli so that gaseous exchange can take place. So that is 350 milliliters and this volume is known as alveolar volume. That means this is going up to the alveoli and this remains in the uh, tract. This is known as or this volume is known as anatomical dead space and this volume of air is known as dead space volume. This is called dead space volume and this is alveolar volume. So normally when we say we are inhaling in a resting position, 500 milliliters of air goes in. Out of that, only 350 milliliters reaches up to the alveoli and 150 remains in the tract. So this 150 is actually not available for gaseous exchange because gaseous exchange takes place in 
the alveoli. So this volume will be called the alveolar volume because it is going there and the one which remains in the tract is known as dead space volume because this tract is known as the anatomical dead space. There is one more term which is called physiological dead space which includes this anatomical dead space plus those non-functional alveoli through which the gaseous exchange is not taking place. So here we will add one more term and that is physiological dead space or volume. This is anatomical dead space or dead space volume. So this is actually dead space volume or anatomical dead space plus non-functional alveoli or alveolar space. This would make the physiological dead space. So tidal volume is for our norm. Now the second term which we are talking about is called inspiratory reserve volume. And the abbreviation used is IRV, IRV, inspiratory reserve volume. Now to understand this, we'll have to keep uh, practicing what exactly we are talking about. Normal inhalation, we take normal air in, how much is going in? 500 milliliters, that is the tidal volume. So after normal inhalation, if we stop and then try to inhale some more air, forcefully that that means are we able to inhale if we can try this normal inhalation and some more air that means that air goes in and if it goes in there must be some space for it and that space is known as inspiratory reserve volume there is some volume which is reserved which can be filled when we forcefully take in air after normal inhalation so how do we define it the volume of air which can be taken in or inhaled after normal inhalation. This is the inspiratory reserve volume and <coughs> this volume is about 2000 milliliters to 3000 milliliters or we can say it is 2 liters to 3 liters. This much of air we can take in forcefully after taking the normal 500 milliliters. So if we take it, we don't realize whether we are actually taking half a liter of the air in normal breathing. But after taking it, if we stop and try to inhale some more air, the amount of or the volume of air which can go in is about 2 to 3 liters. This is inspiratory reserve volume. That means there is space in our lungs which is going to hold this much air. The third term is inspiratory capacity. That means, uh, okay, abbreviation would be inspiratory capacity is IC. Now we, we are talking of only inhalation. Normal breathing, the air goes in. Again, that is a space or the capacity of our lung to hold 500 milliliter. After we take 500, we can inhale more that much. That means 2000 to 3000 milliliter. So after forceful inhalation, that is followed by normal inhalation. Normal inhalation and then forcefully taking it. All that air is going into our lungs. That means this is the capacity of our lung to hold the complete inhaled air. So how do we reach to that volume? This is tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume. That would give us the capacity. So in normal inhalation, 500 goes in. 
and after that forcefully 2000 to 3000 milliliter also goes in so this is 500 plus 2000 to 3000 milliliter so the total is going to come to 2500 milliliters to 3500 milliliters or 2.5 liters to 3.5 liters this is our lungs inspiratory capacity quick recap of these three things which we have done tidal volume is the normal or, or rather the volume of air which is inhaled in a normal situation resting position that volume is 500 milliliters this is tidal volume out of this 500 only 350 reaches up to the alveoli so we call that alveolar volume because this is the air which is available for exchange of gases 150 milliliter remains in the tract so this tract space inside the tract is known as anatomical dead space and this volume is in this space so is known as dead space volume there is something called physiological dead space or dead space volume also. That would include the one, the air which is in the dead space plus if there are some non-functional alveoli. Now inspiratory reserve volume. After normal inhalation that is taking in 500 milliliters, if we forcefully take in some more air, that air can go and fit into our lungs. That means our lungs have that reserve volume to take in that air. So it is the volume of air which can be taken in forcefully after normal inhalation. And that volume comes to 2000 milliliters to 3000 milliliters or 2 liters to 3 liters. So how much is the capacity of our lungs to hold? the air inhaled air tidal volume 500 and then forcefully taken in 2 to 3 liters so it would come to 2.5 or 2.5 liters to 3.5 liters this is the inspiratory capacity of our lungs now the next uh, term which we would discuss would be related to exhalatory volumes